Hello everyone, my name is Remy, I work with the eStaker community and I'm here today to show you how you can add a withdrawal address on your validator using the Wagyu Keygen tool. So let's get started. So I've got a few windows here. Uh, the first one is going to be the details that we need to add this withdrawal address. I'm currently running a validator on Girly this testnet uh, which is um, supposed to be free um, but now has a value um, but where you can like try running your own validator and I'm gonna use this validator simply because it's an easy way for me to uh, demo this whole uh, process here so let's get started with the details that you need um, in order to add a withdrawal address you will need your mnemonic so this is like the 24 words um, that you initially uh, use and that you should still have to create your validator keys. Um, you will need your start index. So this is related to the fact that you can derive multiple keys or validators from the same mnemonic if you only have one key or one validator created from that mnemonic, the start index is going to be zero. <laughs> so I'm just going to input this here. You're going to need the indices or the validator indexes as uh, defined on the beacon chain. So these are the indexes that are created or assigned to your validator once it gets activated on the beacon chain. And an easy way to find this value is to go on the various uh, Beacon Chain websites. So I'm currently on the girly version of the Beacon Chain. And I already am on my validator page here. If you want to find your, you can use the search tool here to search by public key, by deposit address, by graffiti, in a bunch of various uh, different ways. Once you are on your validator page, um, the indice or the validator index is simply going to be shown here at the top. So I'm just going to copy here that value and I'm going to paste it here. The next value that you're going to need is your withdrawal credentials. And similar to the indice or the validator index, you can find that value easily on the Beacon Chain website. So all you have to do is scroll down here, um, go into the deposit tab, and it should show here your current withdrawal credentials are, and I'm just simply going to copy this value here. All right, all I'm left is uh, to find the withdrawal address. I wanna put all my rewards and my eventually my validator balance into. And so this address is going to be a wallet address that you have control of and that you will also have control of in the future. So make sure that um, this is like a wallet address that you will always have control of, right? So a, a good way or a good practice would be maybe to use a, a hardware wallet or like a cold wallet somewhere. Um, where you can, you'll be able to send all the rewards and eventually if you choose to exit your validator you'll be able to get your full deposit. In my case and for this demo I'm simply going to use the deposit address um, that I initially used when I performed the deposit for this uh, validator. So it's it's this address here. And once I'm I'm done with gathering all these uh, details, I can start uh, the Wagyu Keygen tool and generate a file that it, that'll be able to use um, to add these uh, withdrawal address. Uh, another important detail here is uh, you can only do this on validator who do not currently have a withdrawal address. And this is easy to, f to see with um, the withdrawal credential. In this case, uh, validators who do not currently have a withdrawal address have uh, their withdrawal credentials start with 0x00. So this is the case for this validator here. So I can I can keep going. Before running the Wagyu Keygen tool, 
Um, it's a good practice to use an offline machine, uh, a machine that uh, never was connected to the internet and never will be. An easy way to get there is to um, boot from a USB drive on which you install like a live OS. Um, this is out of scope for this demo, but I'm, I'm just going to use this current machine here for this demo. Um, this is not the secure way to do it, but it's just an easy way for me to show this whole process. So let's start Wagyu Keygen here. We'll wait until it uh, loads and we'll be able to uh, get going. So in order to generate this uh, new file um, to change the withdrawal address, uh, you'll have to use your existing secret recovery phrase, which is just another term for the mnemonic. Um, you have to choose the network. Uh, this is for a validator on Gurley, so I'm just going to choose uh, Gurley here. And then at this step, um, I don't want to regenerate my validator keys again. I just want to generate this um, BLS to execution change, which is a big phrase to say that we just want to add a withdrawal address. So I'm just going to click on this option here. First step is to input your mnemonic or your secret recovery phrase. This is the place where you don't want to compromise potentially um, your mnemonic to um, any devices which is connected to the internet, right? So um, if you are to run this, make sure to run this on an offline machine. But in this case, I'm just going to copy and paste the mnemonic that I used to initially create this um, validator. On this screen, you'll be asked to input a bunch of, of uh, values. So as we uh, determine, we have to use the start index zero since I only have one validator created from that uh, mnemonic. In the indices field or the validator index, um, I'll have to input my validator index here, the one that I found on the Beacon Chain website. If you want to do this process for multiple validator that are all derived from the same um, mnemonic, you could like add all of them here, um, but you have to find all of these uh, indices or validator index ahead of time. Next, I have to input the withdrawal credentials. So this is this value that I found in the deposits tab. Um, same as uh, with the indices, if you have multiple validators derived from the same mnemonic, you can input many withdrawal credentials here. Um, all you have to do is um, separate them with um, commas. And the most important field here is your actual withdrawal address here. So this is the withdrawal address I mentioned that should uh, be under your control and that should be under your control in the future as well. So I've chosen to use this address. I'm just going to copy and paste it here. The next step is uh, simply to choose a folder where this um, BLS2 execution change file will be created in. And I've already um, selected this folder here. And it's going to be easy for me to uh, reuse it afterwards. So once I create, once I click on this create button, um, I'm pretty much done. My uh, BLS2 execution change file was created here. Um, this is a folder and it only has a single file, um, which usually starts with um, BLS2 execution change with a, a few numbers that JSON. And this is the, the file that you can use to broadcast um, your uh, withdrawal address change. All right. so. I should have my file here. So here's the file that I can use to um, add a withdrawal address uh, on my validator. In order to broadcast this change, um, there's a, a few different ways, but a very easy way to do it is simply to go on the Beacon Chain website and use their broadcast tool, right? So if you go into their uh, menu, there's a link called uh, Broadcast Signed Message. And you can simply 
um, drag and drop uh, the file there. Um, you'll see it has a bunch of different fields. Some of these fields can be quite cryptic, um, but uh, you should know that it simply includes a signature um, that tells um, the beacon chain that you want to use this new uh, withdrawal address for your validator. Once I'm done, um, I can simply submit and broadcast the change here, and it will create this change request job on the beacon chain website. Uh, where um, I'll have to, to wait a few minutes until the withdrawal uh, address is added on my uh, validator here. So let's wait and come back once this is done. I can see here that my, if I come back to my validator page, I can see that the current withdrawal uh, credentials are my old withdrawal credentials, but my pending withdrawal credentials are um, this new uh, value here and we're simply waiting for uh, finality to confirm that the change was actually applied and we have a bunch of other information here uh, telling us when that should be effective so let's just wait and see um, what we um, can show once that is completed all right, I'm back and it seems like the epoch in which I publish my change to add this withdrawal address is now finalized. So I'm guessing um, the change should be good now. There you go. You can see now that my current withdrawal credentials are starting with 0x01 which means I now have a withdrawal address on this um, validator. Let me see if we have withdrawals that are incoming. So we don't have any withdrawals yet, um, but since I have an excess amount above 32 ETH, I should eventually, the next few minutes, have um, withdrawals coming in the uh, withdrawal address that I just added on this uh, validator. So let's come back in a few minutes and see if that's the case. I'm back and I'm still waiting on my withdrawals, but I guess I'm not gonna wait too much longer. It might take a while since there's a lot of validator on Girly right now waiting for their own withdrawals, but you should know that eventually any amount above 32 ETH is going to be sent to this withdrawal address that I selected. That completes the change to add a withdrawal address on my validator here. If I eventually wanted to get all my balance, all I would need to do is perform a voluntary exit and it would send my initial deposit plus everything that's remaining on balance to the withdrawal address. Before I leave you, I'm just going to remind you of a few things. Um, when selecting your withdrawal address, make sure you double check and even triple check to make sure that it's a correct address that you have control of. You should try not to make any mistake there because that change can only be performed once. So like it's a critical part of this whole change here. Another thing I wanted to mention um, as a re uh, reminder these changes cannot be applied on mainnet yet. You'll have to wait on until April uh, 12 after the Chappelle forks uh, before you can publish all of these changes, right? So this is something we've mentioned previously, but um, as a reminder, you cannot perform this change on mainnet yet. You'll have to wait a few weeks um, until all of this is implemented on the mainnet um, network. All right. Thanks for watching this video. If you need any more support or help with these procedures, make sure to join the EVE Staker Discord or ask your question on the EVE Staker subreddit.